Hi there, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time you're watching this at. It's morning for me. I just wanted to film a little quick get ready with me. I haven't filmed one of these in a really long time. I haven't filmed in a really long time, it feels like. Um, so I just wanted to play with a couple new products that I picked up and do some chit chatting because I feel like I've been I've been away from the YouTube community for like it feels like a month. It's not been that long, but I just haven't really been watching a whole lot of videos. I've been sort of popping on to quickly like reply to some comments, but for the most part, I haven't really been on YouTube for like most of July and now like halfway through August. And I'm starting to watch a few videos now. Um, but anyway, let's get started. I'm just going to use my Project Pan. This is the Milk Blur Stick for my primer. It's, it's getting done. It's getting there. I really only use this sort of like in the center of my face. Sometimes I use another primer underneath it, like for all over, but I don't have one right here with me. So, so what's new with you? <laughs> oh, I'm like, I just woke up. And my eyes are still really baggy and sleepy. Speaking of sleepy, Harley is sleeping behind me right now. I'll, I'll, I'll show a little clip of where he's at. Sleeping in his little bed. He's not much of a morning dog. <laughs> Let's talk about Harley, because that's a good thing to talk about. It's been well. It's been good. I guess it's been about a month and a half since I adopted him. He has lost some weight, so he's lost about two pounds. He's just under... 30 pounds right now. Ideal weight, if we ever get him down there, is about, I mean, ideal weight is 15 to 17 pounds, but I'm aiming for like 22-ish. I think that's reasonable given his age and activity level. I'm just using my Project Pan foundation. This is the Rimmel Lasting Foundation in the shade True Ivory. Spoiler alert, it's like almost done. It's actually way down here. <laughs> I like scraped the edges to see how far down it is. Um, it's way down here. So we're almost done. So yeah, he's doing really good. Um, he, he's been on lots of adventures already. He has been obviously home to my family house and he seems to really enjoy it. The difficulty when we first went there was, oh my gosh, it's starting to squirt. It's getting difficult to like get this out. Um, difficult thing at my family house is we have stairs at our front porch. Um, we have stairs inside, but he doesn't have to use the stairs inside, and he hasn't, um, which I'm kind of glad because I'm afraid he'd, like, hurt himself. So it was a bit of a struggle getting him up and down the stairs at first, partially because he just didn't really know how to maneuver them. Um, but he's a lot better now. He, like, if he's really excited, he, like, bunny hops up the stairs, which I think is super cute. Um, he does have a bit of a limp, so I haven't taken him to the vet yet. Um, like my vet, and I do want to ask them about that. Um, it doesn't seem to bother him, like, it it just, and when he walks really fast, because he gets, like, really excited sometimes, and he does walk fast, fast for him, like, I'm surprised at how fast he can walk, it almost goes away, um, and it seems more pronounced when he walks really slow, so again, I don't know if it's just, because he is kind of wonky, <laughs> not really like a painful limp I think it's just his body is lopsided um, and out of shape so anyway he went for his first haircut this past week like at least with me and we did a summer cut even though summer is almost over because it's still so hot here like, I think it went up to 32 yesterday 32 Celsius so but I mean, he's such a sweetheart. Everybody stops and says hi. To, he stops, to, wants to say hi to everybody. He wants to stop and say hi to every dog. His little tail goes like a mile a minute when it, a dog walks by. Um, I mean, his hello doesn't last very long. He just wants to sniff and say hello. And then he's like, okay, cool, met you, bye. <laughs> he's not really into the, the uh, lasting relationships, I guess. But yeah, even people, like there's certain people he'll run up to, like he gets really excited for. I don't know why, like what it is about those people, but there's certain people that really catch his attention. Um, but like he's not afraid of anyone. Um, he's not afraid of anything. So we took him camping. <laughs> I don't know if he really cared for camping. Um, I'm kind of learning his personality. He does really like to be outside, I mean, like most dogs. 
Um, but I feel like he likes to be outside in the city more because there's more things to look at. Whereas like with camping or at my parents' house, um, like he's not really into like birds <laughs> or squirrels. Like I don't think he has any, he has zero reaction to them, which I find very interesting. Um, yeah, like he just has no reaction to wildlife <laughs> whatsoever. It's like he doesn't even know he's supposed to. So when I like, after I was, you know, camping, after I was at the cottage, well, cottage, family house, it's not a cottage, it's a house, and came back to the city and took him out for a walk, and like, oh, he's gonna be super disappointed. And like, I see the excitement on his face. Like, he definitely likes, likes the city. Um, but yeah, he's, he's one of the laziest dogs I've ever had, and he's definitely not a morning dog. Um, I haven't even taken him outside for a morning bathroom break because he just, He's been sleeping in his bed, and I'm like, well, if he doesn't want to get up, I'm not gonna force him this morning. Like, it's it's the weekend, you know. This is when you sleep in. But I mean, he's the sweetest personality. The only time I've seen him get a little, a little funky, was um, trying to clip his nails. He clearly does not like that. So I was waiting till he fell asleep, and I would trim them when he fell asleep. And. Sorry, I'm just using my project pan. This is the, well, spoiler alert, I haven't hit a pan on that. I barely use this. It's been here at my place in Toronto, and to be honest, I haven't even been using it very regularly. So there's that. So um, I don't even remember what I was saying now. Anyway, I'm gonna use this. This is the Pure Anata um, Sheer Matte Pressed Mineral Foundation. It's like a translucent setting powder. And we'll see how this goes. I've used it once before, but like the foundation that I'm wearing is pretty matte already, so, and it sort of sets pretty well too. It's definitely sheer, like I don't think it's adding any coverage to my face. Oh, I know what I was talking about. I was talking about Harley's, again, clipping nails, something like that. And then I did a DNA test for him, so that was part of when I adopted him. They gave me a DNA test to submit. He did not like the swab. <laughs> again, had to wait till he fell asleep before I gave him the... Cause I, I tried and he got a little growly and I was like, okay, okay, I get it. So anyways, so we did his DNA test. So he is a uh, Shih Tzu and Havanese, which I'm pretty sure about. He also is Tibetan Spaniel, which I don't see any of that. So sorry, interrupting myself again. I'm using these e.l.f. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. And this is in the shade Light Ivory. I contemplated over a couple shades. I picked this one. Hopefully it will show on camera. This is just, it's a, it's a weird, a weird concealer. Anyways, uh, Tibetan Spaniel, uh, Tibetan Terrier, which once I looked up a Tibetan Terrier, I'm like, oh, okay. I think it's Tibetan Terrier. It's one or the other. If I flip it around, one of them, it's like, yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. And then King Cavalier Spaniel, which I said to my family, I'm like, I know there's Spaniel in there. And like, I don't see that. I saw it. Anyway, hopefully you can see. So this looks kind of dark. And that's actually a lot. Like, I've done way too much. And then as I start, like, patting it out. Can you see how that, like, goes light? Like this eye is like light. Like I, am I the only one that sees that? It's a bit weird. Um, so I feel like I should have gone for the darker shade that I was considering. I mean, at least it's it's brightening and it's not actually darker. But see how that like, it almost changes. It's like, it's almost like, you know when you have lipstick that has a white base and you really sort of see that white base as the lipstick wears down? That's what I feel like this is doing. I don't know if anybody else has this concealer and has noticed that. I found it really interesting. Just using the same powder under my eyes. Okay, and I'm just going in with my Project Pan Franken Bronzer. So yeah, he's really good. Again, I'm concerned about, I have to take him to the vet to talk about the limp um, and just kind of his weight loss progress and. Am I doing the right thing? Is there anything else I should be doing? Um, I mean, 
weight loss in dogs is difficult. I mean, weight loss in people is difficult. But dogs, it's tricky too, especially with him not being very active. And he just, he just doesn't, he's not a very active dog. Um, he has his moments. Um, so when we took him camping, and he did walk a, quite a bit of one of the trails um, the one day. But like, and I saw this camping, and I saw this this past weekend, like yesterday. I mean, that's probably why he's like, that's it right now. Is we went outside a number of times yesterday. I used to take him out three times. But yesterday we spent a lot of time outside, and he did a really long walk around the park last night, like pretty late. And I think that's why he's feeling a little like meh. So when he's kind of like this, sometimes what I'll just do is like literally just take him out for a potty break. I won't make, like even try and make him walk um, because I've been trying to get him to like walk and move for the weight loss. But I mean, sometimes I just like whatever. Other people laugh, so I have like a wagon because I took him down to the waterfront yesterday and he, he can't walk that far like I like if we did walk that far it would take like four hours and so I take him down the wagon and then I take him out when I get down there so he can walk around when we get down there but people just laugh because they're like riding in style I'm like yeah he's loving it <laughs> like he loves the wagon he loves being pulled around he loves being carried like he totally sucks up and when we're walking sometimes when I don't have the wagon and he like falls down and he gives me this look it's like you're gonna carry me and I'm just like I try and fight it and then sometimes like I said sometimes I can tell he really is tired and his little legs you see like his little legs will like quiver and like especially his back legs they just sort of like flop down like he can't hold them up anymore that's what the groomer had said as well she's like we did most of the grooming laying down <laughs> I was like yep and like actually he's kind of funny if you flip him on his back he's sort of like a turtle like He's sort of like at your mercy. He can't like do anything and he doesn't really fight anything. So like I have a life jacket for him and to put it on, I basically flip him upside, put it down and I place him in it like a baby and wrap it around him. Cause like when he's on his back, he's like, oh, whatever, you do it, go nuts. So I'm just gonna do my eyebrows, but I'm gonna do that off camera cause they're not exciting. Okay, eyebrows are on. I just used my trusty Project Pan Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade and Taupe. And then I have primed my eyes already with, again, Project Pan Urban Decay Primer Lotion. This is getting like pretty low. I'm getting, I'm struggling with this. I'm almost considering like cutting it open and scooping the rest out into like a little pot because I'm starting to like struggle getting it out. Anyway, I wanted to use on my eyes today this Charlotte Tilbury Quad. It is new to me. It is the Pillow Talk Quad. So I bought this as well as what we're gonna use later is the Pillow Talk Blush. Bought them from someone on Reddit. So I, I did a, a Reddit meetup to buy some makeup, which I feel like is a crazy thing to do with a pandemic. So actually why I'd reach out to the girl was she had um, the Sultry palette from Anastasia and I really want that, but you can't buy it here in Canada, which is so stupid. And anyway, I'm just gonna go in with this medium pink shade in the crease so I'm a, I'm a little salty that somebody else beat me to the punch on that um because when i first sent her a message she's like oh it's still available and then she realized that someone had a guide messaged her but somebody else had messaged her first and she hadn't seen that message anyway putting that out there if you are a canadian and you have the sultry palette and you don't want it anymore and it's in good shape like i mean i don't want one that's like half done like that's kind of pointless yeah, it's, I don't know why it's not available here. It doesn't make sense. But she also had a couple of Charlotte Tilbury things, and I've been wanting to try this quad. I've been wanting to try another quad since I've had that previous quad because I've had such mixed feelings about it. I still don't think it's worth full price. Like, this full price is $60, I think, or 66 something like that. And, like, that's expensive. So I paid $40. Basically, yeah, I paid forty. Like I paid seventy dollars for both, so I'm I'm saying this was forty, and the blush was thirty, because that just makes the mental math easier. I mean, I could say they're both thirty-five. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, I really wanted to try this because um, I know Jessica Braun talks about this quad, and she really likes it. And I think I've seen a couple other people talk about it and really like it. And again, the other quad I have, I think. The quad is actually really good. It's deceiving, except for that one shade. But I've seen somebody else, I forget who it was. I'm just gonna take the deeper color and do the outer corner. And 
they have like the newer version i think it's called bella sophia like they they redid the quad that i have i forget the name of it i think it's called the dolce vita is the version i have but i'm pretty sure it's rebranded as um, the bella sophia and their sparkly shade seems to be a lot better than mine so i think they reformulated it anyway the sparkly shade in this one is it's, it's okay it's definitely like it's subtle like if you are not into super high impact but you still want a bit of shine that's what you're gonna get out of the sparkly shade anyway you'll see once i put it on um i've used this palette i think twice this will be the third time i've used it again i'm really finding again with like the other quad that i have the mattes are really nice they're really soft but they're not super powdery um and they blend really nicely so i feel like these quads i mean if you're wanting to spend the money these quads are good for if you're not great at makeup <laughs> um, i think i think that's the point too like i think it caters to people that are not like i just want like a soft pretty look that doesn't take a lot of effort that's what i feel like these eyeshadows are again i don't think i'd ever pay for them full price <laughs> they're so expensive for what they are I'm trying to think of what i have that's comparable i actually feel like so i have that cover girl um I have the old version, the roses, and the texture actually feels a lot like that, but less, those are really powdery. These ones are less powdery, um, but the texture feels similar. Like it's that really, really soft. And these are like maybe more fine powder, whereas I feel like those are a bit more powdery. Like I said, they're definitely more powderier, but from a texture perspective, that's what it actually reminds me of. So I'm just gonna go in with the light shade all over the lid. So again, really pretty quad, I mean, this is an easy everyday look you don't have to think too hard about this at all and then the sparkle shade again i'm going to try and use my finger here like you can probably see there's not much of a difference I, like it probably won't even show up on camera because the difference is so subtle um anyway i'll put some swatches online there are swatches like screenshot of some swatches that's what i'm trying to say so yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm glad I did buy this. I think it's a really nice quad. Um, and I'm kind of into this sort of quad thing, like our smaller palettes. It's definitely my cup of tea right now. So I want this eye look to be pretty soft. So I'm using, um, I'm not using a black eyeliner. I'm using Rockstar from Urban Decay. And then I'm, I'm gonna try and use this new liquid liner that I got from Purinata. I might do this off camera <laughs> just because liquid liner in me it's a process. So I'm just wondering how people are doing with COVID and everything. It's a bit weird here in Ontario, especially seeing the states. Like we've had less than 100 cases in our entire province. Um, and yeah, it's just very different from what we're seeing in the states. I feel like things here have opened up a bit more. Like I'm actually going to brave going to the store today. Like, I have to go to the grocery store, but I want to go to Marshall's and just check out some of the dog stuff, obviously, and, and some of their makeup, obviously. Um, and I'm feeling comfortable enough to do that right now. And I feel like I'm in this weird limbo mode. And I think going home kind of changed. Not changed, but helped me relax a little bit more. Like, when I went home, the entire county where I'm from had had, like, just over 100 cases kind of thing over this entire thing um i don't think they had any deaths either like or if they did it was very very few like five or less um which is surprising because there's a lot of seniors that live up there so and i don't want to get into that um long-term care home thing in ontario that's where we really mess this up yeah i just i'm in this mode of i've kind of hit this like acceptance mode of i'm still fairly I don't want to say quarantine, but I'm fairly limiting what I'm doing and where I'm going. Like I, like I said, I'm not going into all the stores. I'm not going to restaurants. I'm definitely not going into restaurants. Um, but I kind of feel like like everything. So I went camping with a couple friends. We each had our own tents because we didn't want to sleep in the same tent together. And it was kind of like, if I get COVID from this trip, I can accept that. <laughs> like. I have chosen to take this risk to go camping and spend some time with a couple of good good friends. So that's a risk I'm, risk I'm willing to take. Do I want to go to the movie theater and watch a movie and then risk getting COVID 
no. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's that the risk assessment. And I guess everybody has a different risk tolerance. And again, trying to be conscious of every action that I do will, could affect somebody else. So if I get COVID, there's a potential that I might get give it to somebody else. And I know people, there's the whole controversy over the masks. Whatever, lesson learned. We have learned that masks are actually helpful. Um, people are saying like, oh, what did doctors know when they said they weren't useful before? Well, they weren't sure before. And like any good scientist, as new information comes your way, it is totally okay to change your opinion. Okay, I'm gonna just try and do a bit of a wing with this and then come back. So that wing actually worked out quite well. I mean, my eyes are wonky. That's one of the reasons why I don't do wings very often because my eyes are so asymmetrical that <laughs> they're never gonna look right. Um, but that was surprisingly easy. I need to practice that some more. Anyway, I, I guess with COVID too, I'm also bracing for the second wave here. Um, in the fall, I just, I think we're gonna see cases go up again. I don't know, I think everybody's predicting that. It will be a pleasant surprise if that does not happen. Um, the big thing here in Ontario, I don't know what other provinces, I think I've seen this with Alberta too, is the back to school plan, or lack thereof. I just, I don't have kids. Um, I don't know what I would do. I don't know what choice I would make. Um, it's not easy. And the thing is like, I feel for you guys because it affects all of us. Like the decision to send kids back, I don't have kids, but it affects me too. Um, because if kids get parents sick and parents get other people sick, then I get sick too. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's making me think of a couple of you guys. I know uh, Christine, I think you're a teacher. And, um, sorry, this is a mascara. This is like the only mascara I have that's not uh, waterproof. It's this L'Oreal, I don't even know, collagen something or other. That's not great. Christine, I know, I'm pretty sure you're a teacher, so I don't know what's going on with you. Uh, Leia, I know you have kids. How do you make the decision? Especially when you have kids of different ages. So like here in Ontario, I have like, they have different plans for different ages. But what if you have kids in all of those age groups? Like. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I know, like, if I were a parent, on one hand, you're like, oh my god, get these kids out of my hair. <laughs> like, I'm sure you want to get them back to school, but at the same time, at what cost? Like, our school infrastructure, oh, this means a little wonky. I need to fix that. Our school infrastructure is real bad. Most of our schools don't have air conditioning. Most of the schools are from, like, the 60s and 70s. <laughs> like, they haven't built a whole lot of new schools. And the way some of the older buildings are designed, it's really, really hard to upgrade them, like update the HVAC. And I think, I mean, this whole thing has shown how bad our ventilation systems are in general. Because <laughs> um, I think, so in my unprofessional, professional opinion, it's been proven, or like at least it seems like the evidence is being indoors with people for an extended period of time is is how you're gonna get it. That seems to be, and that kind of makes sense when you think about the science and think about the testing that they've done. So it's very interesting. I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury blush and this is in Pillow Talk. It's much deeper than I thought it would be for the Pillow Talk shade, like for the generic shade, because most of Charlotte Tilbury stuff is very like light. So you're supposed to like use the outer, this is the reverse nipple one, use the outer color very powdery too by the way like and very pigmented so you kind of have to like tap some off so yeah here in Ontario we have to wear at least I don't yeah I think in all of the province you have to wear masks in store um, but you don't have to wear them outside and I hope we can keep it like that because honestly so I have to wear it in my condo too like when I go out to when I take the dog out but as soon as I go outside, I uh, I can take it off, which I really appreciate because I'd hate to have to wear it 24-7 outside. I'd probably spend less time outside. Um, and then like up where my parents are, or my dad, in our family house, it like, there's nobody there. Like you are so far away from everybody. I mean, that's why like there's no cases up there um, because everybody's really, really spread out. See how intense that blush is. <laughs> like it, it can get pretty pretty hairy. And then you're supposed to take the center color and then like pop that on top. 
think it's kind of supposed to be a bit of a highlight. I haven't tried like just swirling it all together, so I should try that at some point. And yeah, like the whole mask thing, like, I feel sorry for people in the States, but we have idiots here too that are like, I refuse to wear a mask, my freedom. It's like, the only reason why you have your freedom is because people made sacrifices and... <sighs> I'm just using Milani lip liner in all natural. You can see it's getting pretty small. It's one of my favorite liners. And then for lips, I recently picked up this Essence uh, Plumping Nudes Lip Gloss. This is in the shade 04, that's big. It's not really plumping. I don't really get the plumping aspect. Um, and I forget who it was. Somebody else talked about these and said they weren't sticky. They, there's definitely a bit of stick. Like if I compare this to like the Becca Lip Gloss, which is like super smooth, this definitely has a bit of stick, but it's not sticky sticky. But there's definitely a bit of tack there. I don't know if I'd buy any other of these. Like I, I think this was the only shade that I was really interested in. Um, and I, I know who buys lip products in pandemics when nobody gets to see them because you're wearing a mask. But anyway, I do like this. Um, again, I don't love it. I don't think I would repurchase one of these. I mean, it's a good price point and it is a nice color, but like, I really like those Becca lip glosses that I bought last year. Um, and I do like the Revlon lip glosses. I think those are one of my favorite lip glosses. I would say this is a fairly similar formula to that. Um, this again might be a bit thicker. Um, I don't know, I haven't used those in a while. I should pull it out. Okay, I'm gonna just fix up my hair and close out this video. Okay, so that's it. That is the final makeup look. I, I, like I said, I really like this quad. It's an easy breezy, sorry cover girl, <laughs> quad to use. You're really only going to get one kind of look out of this. Um, like, I mean, you could probably play with it a little bit, but for the most part, you're going to get one kind of look. But for some people, I think that's really what you're looking for. It gets quick and easy. Again, are these overpriced? I'd love to be able to find, like, a drugstore dupe for this. Um, or even, like, this is a thing, like, if you were to buy, like, if I were to buy single shadows, like, ColourPop shadows are going to cost me about $10 each. This would still be $40 if I bought four single eyeshadows. So, I mean, you're still not saving money by like going like a ColourPop route. The only way you would save money is if you could find a drugstore quad or a small palette that duplicated this. And I'm sure you could maybe find something. I don't know. I haven't really looked to see if there is anything. Milani might have something. And the blush is really nice, so... <laughs> The other blush that I bought recently was the Dallas Dallas blush. I definitely prefer this over that. I kind of regret buying that Dallas blush. I don't love it. Um, the color, again, is not quite what I'd hoped for. And it's highly scented. I've really noticed now that I've used it a few times or just like having it sitting, I've had it sitting out my like regular daily use stuff. It like, it's very fragrance, like fragranted. I don't know why nobody, has nobody ever mentioned this or if I just like completely missed the fact that that blush has like a really strong perfume scent that I really don't like. Like it just, I don't know, I'm not a big perfume person. So anyway, I'm just curious to know how you guys are doing. Um, like I said, I feel like I've been not present, um, but there's been multiple reasons for that. Uh, like I said, one of the things is I've been traveling back and forth from my, my family home to the city and yeah, I've just kind of almost taken a mental break from being online a little bit, and I think I've needed that. Um, yeah, there's a, there's other things going on with me right now that are maybe not that great, so I don't really want to get into that. But um, I feel like right now with COVID, at least here in Ontario, what we're doing right now I think is manageable. If we can keep it like this, this is why I'm worried about with schools opening because it's gonna it's really gonna upset the balance of what's going on right now feels manageable. I don't know. This is such a weird time. Like, it's such a weird... I don't even know what to talk about. Because um, I do feel like, you know, every day it's just... Just try and, try and stay a little positive. Try and not get let the news get you down. Um, try and not let the crazy world get you down. Keep looking at the good things. Keep, uh, keep being grateful for the positives. Right? Anyway... I do hope you are doing well. If you did like this video, feel free to give it a little thumbs up down below. 
And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my tiny little channel here in Toronto, Canada. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye.